Welcome uh, to the Books Cafe, your literature program on KBC English Service. I'm your host, Hainga Okwemba. The Books Cafe is a cutting-edge program in the world of literature where we talk uh, to writers and explore uh, contemporary uh, literary issues. And today, once again, we are privileged to have a Nigerian writer and poet, God's Power Oboido, who was in this studio several months ago, last year actually, when he was attending the second edition of Kistrich, uh, that poetry international festival that happens down in Kisi. God's Power has just released his first collection of poetry, Songs of, Songs of a Chicken Born. Very interesting poems. <laughs> He'll be reading from that collection. God's Power, welcome to the program. Thank you so very much. And I should say that in Kisohili, Asante Sana. Great. Uh, the, you know, last year when you came to when you came to the books cafe yeah. uh, that was the first time you were visiting east africa indeed you're right yeah um so uh, any changes uh, do you feel very much at home i, I feel I, I mean of of course last year i felt home but um but this year you know it just feels like this is really home for me you know kenya is not um a country where i just come for tourism it feels like i'm coming home and so it's been tremendous you know it's been the feeling has been really tremendous it's been great to be back in kenya mm -hmm. yeah oh great uh, great yeah. of course uh, but the, when you came first you actually you are living in the uk yes. of course you left and then you went back home to nigeria so where are you coming from are you coming from nigeria or from the uk well this last time i came from nigeria these days i don't have a home i just i just travel everywhere these days and uh, mm -hmm. but i came from nigeria this time yeah mm -hmm. When the elections in Nigeria are happening, were you there? I was. I was actually, but I didn't vote for anybody. Mm, why? <laughs> well, I, as much as I think of myself as a political animal, but I just felt none of the guys deserved my, my vote. And, you know, I mean, you know for a fact that there's been a history of um, uh, violent elections in my country. And so I thought, you know, I'm not going to... Um, you know, just go out and vote for these guys, you know, and so I, th I, th I think, you know, we're not there yet where I should vote for anybody, but so, but I, I supported somebody. I didn't vote for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting there. So, you know, I remember I actually visited Nigeria very briefly. Okay. I, I didn't leave the airport when I, I was actually going to Senegal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think I was at uh, Mutala Mohammed yes, uh, International correct. Airport. Yeah. And I'm um, seeing that very, there's a, a very beautiful artifact uh, mm. somewhere within that airport. Mm. But Nigeria today with President uh, 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 Buhari, yeah. Mohammed Buhari. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, back when you when you were <laughs> here last, you know, the the Boko Haram, yes. you know, uh, they, they had actually, you know, uh, scaring everybody in that country. But of course, uh, President uh, Mohammed Buhari did promise that he was actually going to end, you know, the, you know, the, the problem of the Boko Haram. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the situation today? Is Nigeria safe uh, for us to visit? Well, I mean, the thing is, Nigeria's always been safe, you know, in a sense um, of the fact that Boko Haram uh, were operating in the north of the country. Like you have Ashabab mm. operating in the uh, coastal regions of Kenya. Mm. I mean, when Barack Obama was coming to Kenya, um, CNN did say, oh, Kenya is a hotbed of terror. And, you know, Kenyans did not find that um, funny. They protested and CNN had to apologize. And so the thing is, um, the media can actually blow things out of proportion and uh nigeria i would say has always been safe even when there was the ebola outbreak in west africa you know it was still safe. i was here when i flew i, I flew to nigeria when there was the ebola outbreak in west africa you know it's always been safe safe for the fact that the north has had troubles and um i don't think uh buhari's uh emergence as president has changed anything so far mm -hmm. but one thing we know is that here is a president who wants to work who wants to tackle Boko Haram and um you know when he got elected he went to Chad, to the Nigeria Republic to Cameroon to meet the uh, different heads of these countries and so you know they have a plan to tackle Boko Haram and he said you know they give Boko Haram three months and so let's see how it goes and so but you know Boko Haram is still doing what we know them to have been, do to, to been doing in the last couple of years and so uh, but uh, Nigeria is just as safe as um, anywhere else in the world is uh, you know I mean, every country in the world has challenges, and even in America, you know, there's a lot of um, internal violence in America, you know, the terrorist attacks in America as well. So, but um, Nigeria is as safe as anywhere. You're right. You're yes. right. You know, I'm always, you know, as a principle, sometimes I don't, um, I always avoid, even in my writing yes. or even on my 
this program to mention yeah. some of these terrorist group yeah. because sometimes you know they take you know sometimes you when you do that you tend to glorify so the, very the, true yeah, and you know mm. you make them even more yeah. emboldened yeah but this boko haram yeah as a nigerian as a writer what okay. is the genesis well, how did it come about um, how why is it so difficult yeah. you know nigeria yes. back in the day nigeria mm -hmm. used to be celebrated as one of those african mm. countries with a very strong uh, military yeah. yeah i mean you're very correct i mean uh obviously when um you know britain uh went to win burma and to fight the well when britain went to fight the japanese and uh there was the west african soldiers about half of them came from nigeria like you're very correct nigerian military uh you well they still say they're the best in africa which i don't think it is true but um i think what uh, president buhari did say uh on al jazeera and on cnn he said um that the nigerian military has lost its confidence and uh so i i, I wouldn't really you know you one gets very careful like you said when you talk about these terrorist groups and um but i'd like to define boko haram by how they define themselves you know mm -hmm. uh, the word boko haram literally means western education is a scene mm -hmm. right is a ram it's not allowed and they don't want it they want islamic education and so uh they think they could islamize nigeria and so and um it's 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 a complex situation it's something you just don't want to dapple with and uh you know dabble into and but uh, it's hard to say what the genesis of boko haram is you know right now what are they fighting for you can't really say you know this is uh, it's hard it beats me to to be honest mm -hmm. you know i don't know what boko haram is fighting for anymore at one time uh they wanted to islamize nigeria which they still stand for but they become very wild. So not only are they bombing churches and killing Christians, but also mosques and killing Muslims as well. You know, like every other terrorist group around the world does. When when even the people who once supported them no longer support them, they become very wild and they just kill all and sundry. And so uh, it's a complex situation to comment on, really. Mm -hmm. It's a complex uh, situation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you say that Nigeria is safe. Uh, oh, anybody? it is. I mean, yeah. uh, well, I mean, I mean, of course, I wouldn't say you should go to the north. Uh, like uh, Borno and Yobe State as a foreign. I wouldn't say you should go to these places alone, but uh, but Nigeria, as you know, is a very large country, you know, uh, very diverse in every sense of the word diversity. And so, um, you know, what happens in the North is not the same in the South or the East, you know, so it's a you know, very interesting country. Mm -hmm. mm. Very interesting. Yeah. Now, Gold's Power, yes. of course, you've just released your first collection of, of poetry, Songs of a Chicken Boy. That's correct. <laughs> the title itself is very intriguing <laughs> yeah. but before we talk about this poetry okay. you know, yeah, this poetry book let's mm. talk about literature your journey into literature cool beans yeah. yeah yeah okay i mean here's the thing i um when i when i finished high school in nigeria that's in 2004 um i it's interesting because i never really liked literature I, you know, I skipped literature classes and um, especially because, I mean, poetry was very uh, complex for me to understand and I thought, I thought poetry, I thought um, literature was so esoteric and and I just felt like it's not for everybody. And so I thought, you know what, well, I'm a science kid, you know, I want to be an engineer, that kind of thing. And so, so I left high school here yeah, and I was rebellious to the Nigerian education system and I said I wasn't going to go to uni in Nigeria. And so... I stayed at home for quite some time, um, and then and then I went to Lagos, uh, Nigeria's e economic and um, Lagos from where? From Benin. From State. Benin City to Lagos State. I wanted to be a film actor. You know what was I thinking? I've got no looks for acting, but um, and uh, I went to Lagos to the National Theatre, and I um, I wanted to act. And so the guy uh, Martin Adarch at the time, he he said, "Okay, let's see. Can you write me a thirty minutes uh, stage play?" And I thought, "Okay, let's see." And that's how I actually penned my first um, um, work of literature. Uh, and then he liked it and he said, wow, you can actually write very well. And so that's how I started. And I left that awkward dream of becoming an actor. And I, um, so I would write a few more plays, you know. Uh, and they were staged. Well, none of them were staged, mm -hmm. you see. And because uh, um, it was just my initiation into uh, literature, into writing. And so, and then I would uh, proceed to do a few screenplays i did actually edit a screenplay that was produced into a movie and um you know did a few things in my church you know i, I would think my performance uh 
backdrop actually started at the church where um, where I grew up, and um, so that's that's my entry into literature. And then so I mean. I still struggled with poetry, even though I started writing stage plays and the plays of um, J.P. Clark Bakaderemo, whom you love, I know. Very yeah, much. I'm, I've, got, I've got plays here with me, in, well, not here in the studio, but, um, um, you know, Olaro Timmy's plays as well, Wallace Schenker's plays. I thought these were the most beautiful things ever, you know, and I even struggled with Shakespearean plays at the time. And so, and so these African writers, Nigerian writers especially, even Ngugi Wantiago's uh, The Black Hermit and... Um, and I read all of these works and I was so uh, in, interested in stage. And so, um, but writing poetry began when I read a poem by Shagun Meba, a Nigerian uh, writer. She's a great lady. Um, one of, you know, she's, she's no longer writing though. And so it was when I read her poem titled Corruption that I, I just had these uh, revelation of a poetry. It just came boom to me. And, um, and then I would continue to read for the poems, you know, from, you know, you know all the um uh you know great early post-colonial writers uh, from africa you know and so yeah that's been my journey really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting there um, i think uh, yeah. at this point i would actually want you to read um, from songs of a chicken born right okay <laughs> i'm just gonna read the first poem uh the morning of birth uh because it's it's a very significant poem to me um I'm the last child of my family and uh, so and you know like um, I mean in Africa like the Jewish cost, uh, custom you give names to children based on the circumstances that surround your birth or you know whatever destiny you want for them you know and so um, I mean it's very we're very big on that in Nigeria uh, my side of the country in the Yorubas as well and so the morning of birth is really you know, small experiences around my birth and it's really why I have my name, God's Power, which by Kenyan standards, it's not a very uh, common name. And I mean, everywhere I go, I get asked, is that your real name? Is that your name for real? Mm -hmm. You know, and so um, the morning of birth. On one earlier matan morning began my journey here through paths unknown. When the stream of passage broke, my sister was out playing. Mother pushed, but I wasn't coming out. Time silently drifted by in the other world where many children rode on unicorns or waited next in line to be born. They watched me stuck in transition in the morning of birth. They bade me goodbye and then I was born at night. I was cupped in mother's palm. Lifting me up, her newborn, she smiled and said, It must have been by God's power, but I ignored all this. I was a stranger here in this intricate world. Eyes shut in fear, uncertain of this chosen path, I burst out with my earth welcome cry that attracted women to the room. It is a boy, it is a boy, they said, my sister now admiring me from a corner. The women cut the umbilical cord, but that was not a separation. No brilliant fireworks, but singing and clapping welcomed my joyful arrival here as the women danced around me. A newborn a newborn you know when i read uh, this poem there was something that really struck me okay that uh, this was a you know this was a this was a you know uh, a mother or a woman who yeah. is supposed to deliver yeah and then there's there's that expectation mm. but the child does not come at that uh, hour exactly that, uh, that the child was supposed to exactly yeah, to have come yeah and then it was like uh, you know it, you could actually say even people would actually lose hope that this yeah. was not going to be so true a, a good one so true but eventually <laughs> it came out later yeah. many many hours later many, many hours later yes here i am today <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. so is it you know because you know you can actually still write that poem yeah without necessarily referring to your own personal journey yeah you still you know you can just use it it could be also very symbolic yes of, of something about nigeria mm. or, or, or mm. of human beings mm. yeah mm. so true i totally agree mm -hmm. i totally agree i mean um obviously my mother told me that story of the birth and my sister told me later as woo and uh it was the fact that considering the fact that my mother had lost four kids mm. um you know so she had a few struggles and so and then i'm the last child and then i was struggling to come out and yeah, so what so. did that mean to her what did that mean about my destiny mm. right and so uh so i asked myself those questions you know what's you know what was preventing the birth mm -hmm. and so but 
and I came out by God's power. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting there, God's power, or boy dog, reading mm. from songs of a chicken bone yes. you know this poetry book yeah. is actually it's actually published by a kenyan publisher in yeah. same year right uh, that means that you can actually interact with god's powers poetry it's available here in kenya in nairobi songs of a chicken bone now you know when i was reading uh, christopher okikbo's poetry and uh, i must say that uh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much because i read christopher <laughs> Kikbo many many years back yeah and then i you know I actually read his poetry in mm. a library. Okay. Yeah, in one of these, in, in one of um, our libraries here in Nairobi. There right. are two books. Okay. Yeah, there are actually two books uh, with co- complete poetry of Christopher Kikbo. Wow. But after some time, mm. when I went back to the library, those books, you know, one, one of the books was not there. Okay. Only one was left. Right. And the one that was left, not even many poems were there. They had oh. actually, people had actually plucked most of the poems. So I... you couldn't. You want to read like limits, you can't yeah, get it. It's yeah. not there. <laughs> no? and, then, uh, and then God's power <laughs> brought me Christopher Kickbo's <laughs> Labyrinth. <laughs> now, when Christopher mm. was writing this poetry, he actually wrote an introduction and he said yes. that, you know, even though those poems were written differently at different times, yeah. there was something that was actually uniting them. That mm. you could actually, they were written as different fragments. Yeah. But you could unite, there was something that was uniting them so, mm. so that you can actually read them as a complete one work of literature. Yeah. The labyrinth. Mm. Okay. You know, this is, it happens most of the time when you're writing a collection of short stories or poetry. Yeah. So, did you, for example, sit down and say that I want to write? Uh, you know, I have a title called Songs of a Chicken Bone and Write Poems. Or so these are poems that you wrote over a period of time published in different uh, newspapers, uh, mediums. That's, that's a good question. I, I think it would I think it would almost be a similar experience with Okigbo, mm. uh, apparently. Uh, these were, uh, for me as a writer, as a poet, sometimes I write to a particular subject. I write... Um, been inspired by a title i'm very moved by titles and um songs of a chicken bone came to me many years before i ever wrote these um poems the title of the book came many years before i even penned my first serious poem mm-hmm. right and so so they were meant to be uh, individual poems you know um expressing what i felt at those particular points in time of my life but eventually there was a um connecting factor to these poems you know there was this uh place and time where they all kind of you know uh came together and uh to form this book and not all the poems i wrote made it to this collection and so i mean for me songs of a chicken bone why the title is there is because um it's pretty much my journey through life it's pretty much my experience of life that's there and then it's it's about the vulnerability uh not just uh for me the poet but in a generic sense um of our human experience um songs of a chicken bone it's the things the writer um writes from the place um of brokenness the writer is affected by what he sees in society Mm -hmm. and all of these things going on in my life what i see and write about you know they they break your heart sometimes and that's mm-hmm. the vulnerability that's what makes you uh fragile you know a chicken bone apparently you know is a fragile thing and so these are my songs these are my songs of uh, our vulnerability really and so so i think like the okigbo experience you know these were poems written at different times and so whilst i was collecting uh, my first volume together mm-hmm. um the the poems that would define you know the general theme of this work who came into this uh, small book and so yeah great mm. great great if you are just tuning in this is the books cafe on kbc english service the books cafe the premier literature program in the country and today listening to god's power or boido that is still very young but very promising the great uh, poet I love his poetry, and that's why when I learned that he was in town, I said, "Go far, we have to find some time <laughs> and come and read poetry." But of course, this is 
of course this this program is more of poetry than anything else ghost power can you read us another poem yes indeed <laughs> and i have to do this one for nairobi i wrote this poem last year when i came here mm -hmm. uh it's a very short poem which is something that my uh fans would find that in my uh current volume that's coming out soon mm -hmm. uh there are a lot of many many short poems in that uh collection so it's titled nairobi mm -hmm. These skylines with heights of steel and depths of stone erected on resistant Mahu Mahu blood haunt the spectral shadows of colonial Wazungu who are portioned Nairobi's whitewashed earth to themselves. Kibera today is a postcard of yesterday's apartheid. Kibera is a postcard of yesterday's apartheid. <laughs> <laughs> interesting there but what is also interesting is that mm. and this is the power of literature uh, of course when we say that when a writer uh, travels to a place he wants to understand mm. you know the folk narrative yeah that, you know that defines that people yeah and by understanding their literature their poetry he also gets to know about them and yeah. you know he you get to diminish those prejudices that yeah. you might be holding about certain societies mm -hmm. because you now knew understand yeah. the soul that created their poetry and literature so true it reminds me of uh, your friend and our friend <laughs> professor arif khudairi oh yeah yeah when he also visited nairobi he also thought that he could actually <laughs> write a poem about exactly. this city called nairobi mm. interesting there mm. interesting there but saying that kibera is a postcard of yesterday's of apartheid, yesterday's yeah. apartheid yeah, yeah i think but, yeah i think that's significant because um a while as I, ha I was having there's a friend of mine who was taking me around town last year mm. so he was actually telling me you know things about nairobi and then so there was a small quarters uh, where he said in the days of um, the colonial times and where the um the local kenyans had this small buildings where they lived and you know these tiny rooms where they lived and very not well looked after and then they had these white colonial masters who lived in the really posh side of town and so and that really struck me and mm -hmm. so and 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 i was at the time when i was beginning to understand that um you know slums and ghettos and things like that anywhere in the world whether it's in america whether it's in brazil whether it's in nigeria or kenya these things were created by segregation by uh, shifting a certain people uh, to a side of town, uh, having little or no access to education, to welfare, to anything at all. You know, there's going to be consequences from these things. And so Kibera is one of those consequences, which apparently is the biggest slum in Africa, if, I, if I'm correct, Kibera, right? So, so that really struck me how, what kind of damage um, colonial segregation deeds to Africa, African cities. But however, the beauty of the poem lies in the, um, the these skylines with heights of steel and depths of stone erected on resistant Mahumahu blood haunt the spectral shadows. They would never have thought, the colonial Wazungus would never have thought Nairobi would be standing tall today. Mm -hmm. It's still a beautiful city, you know, pulling strong, you know, and so it just haunts um, whatever um plan the colonial masters had to keep africans subjected to poverty you know it's a flourishing city in nairobi you're right a flourishing city now literature you know when you write there are those ones there are a few guys when you ask them that why do you write right uh, does literature uh, can literature impact society mm. in mm. any way mm. Then some would just say that I write for the sake of it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But do you when you write? Uh, do you think that l the literature, the poetry that you write, is going to change? Is going to impact somebody's life or society in a particular way? Yes. Um, I think the writer is the voice of reason, and he is saddled with a rather honourable task to speak truth to power and um but i also especially when it comes to poetry poetry for me my own personal experience is it's my own way of experiencing the world it's my own way of living and it's interesting because um, writing poetry began from a personal experiment you know you're writing to release the butterflies in your stomach you just want to release these things out you write from a, a solitary place you write from a very personal deep deep place but it comes to the point where you know 
this poetry needs wings. This poetry needs to travel. Mm -hmm. It needs to reach the people, you know. And then because obviously every serious writer wants his work to be subjected to criticism and um, to admiration, of course. And so I, I write from the place of um, making myself free. You know, I will feel very tormented not to release the words that dance in my spirit, you see. And so, but at the same time, you want to be a voice of reason. You want to address certain issues that plague society. And uh, so the writer is saddled with that responsibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. I want to read one poem. It, it, it's, it's titled, It Begins from Your Book. And I want you to read one from that collection okay. that I have, the, 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 my, my, my collection of poetry. And then we end the program. Fantastic. <laughs> it Begins. It's a poem by a gold power Oboida from Songs of a Chicken Born. It begins with goodbyes that pull the air, with tears that flood a memory's lane, it begins. The journey over thousands of miles with jumping trains and catching planes, but destiny is a plume that I, a bird of passage, must flutter through. Was not my umbilical code was not my umbilical my umbilical code cut that i may roam in pursuant of a dream tell mother then you robbed messengers that i set forth at dawn when i take on a meal wings let's her bid goodbye from my top for i shall call through the golden rays of dawn a piercing through rebellious clouds I shall turn the earth a flat beneath me like the belly of a placid lake and say you have no hold on me. It begins like I tell this journey begins. Let it be a tool lest it dies in the throat. See, I anticipate it, it like gathering storms. If what must be, if what must be, must be, then let it be. Let this story be told, let it be. It begins, the journey of the prodigal. This labyrinth amazes me sometimes, but I'm a bird of passage, and my life is a journey, always a journey. I do not call lands my home yet. A passer through, I am a tourist of life. <laughs> That's great, thanks for reading. Okay, before I read one of your poems, um, I'm just gonna read it another short one quickly from my new collection. Okay, it's titled good. Abstract Girl, because it's a very significant poem to me uh, for my friend Abigail Simons. Um, Adorn your neck with coral and calm, resplendent through the lavender mist of dawn into my caravan, this place of words. Break your eggshell, let me see you as you are. Woman crowned with garland, while they define beauty on Parisian runways, or set new standards in London and New York, I will my abstract girl admire. Speak of you as beautiful, with leaps of contrition that have told no bulbous tale of you abroad. The world does not know our story, cannot interpret our laughter broken in two. Now I'm going to read your poem for Christopher Kibo. Uh, it's just <laughs> the fact that you and I admire this poet so much, you know, and so I'm going to read that one for Okibo and also the one for um, uh, Nelson Mandela. Okay, good. Um, a nun from the return journey from the supper call of a red tongue, dead lights on a heavenly poet hero, the tongue that fed Erod. Christopher Kibo poet, Kainga Okwemba poet. For Nelson Mandela, oh wondrous philosopher, a 20th century deity, black pimpernel on a freezing desert, a footmark overshadowing apartheid. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the best part of your poetry. You know, um, idolizing this African greats is just amazing. <laughs> amazing. Your poetry is amazing. Thank you, Asante Sana. Thank you. Thank you so much, God Power, for gracing uh, this program again. Of course, Nairobi, you say in your poetry, you know, yeah. writers are travel doers. They are yeah. always traveling. But Indeed. we can tell you that you have a home in Kenya. I th thank you very much, Asante <laughs> Sana. It's always a joy to be back here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kanga. That was the Nigerian writer, God Power Oboido, with his new collection of poetry, Songs of a Chicken Born. We've come to the end of the program. I was your host, Hainga Okwemba, and the producer of the program was Jared Dombo.